I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. This is a paid request for Mr. Majestic. And it's for someone called the Jericho Mile, which I had never heard of, but it's one of the first things that Michael Mann would direct. It was a TV movie about a man who's in prison, and people start to notice he's really fast around the track. And then there's sort of aspirations that maybe we could get him into the Olympics, or maybe we could get him something further up now one of the things I really enjoyed was the cast in this Peter Strauss as the lead he had a nice demeanor to him like he knew what he did he was in here he was said something to the fact of hey can't time don't mess with crime and he's kind of it's not one of those prison movies where every five minutes it's just uh, it's more he sort of I don't want to say settled in but he knows where he's at he kind of yeah, I don't want to say fine but he he's like hey I did it I'm here and that's what it is and he found it was because the dad was bashing his 14 year old stepsister and he's like I know this is happening and this is going to stop so in my mind, the motherfucker should not be in jail. Sally, that's not the law. And I'm sure there's a lot of people in prison who feel the same way. And it does give humanity to people in prison because despite what we want to think, there are people in prison who are human. <laughs> and there's a lot of people that... And you read comments and stories about people who saw this film and it's like, yeah that's the feeling it was in prison or yeah give me a little bit of hope or yeah I felt like one of those guys who would cheer the the guy on as he was running so I could see this could be a film that maybe helped inspire or help people deal with what was going on in their lives which is not a small feat but the cast Peter Strauss does a really good job as the lead you have Jeffrey Lewis May you rest in peace as the prison psychologist who has this prison, like the sports writer, time him and be like, hey, there's something up with this guy. Jeffrey Lewis, he worked with Van Damme and Double Impact. He worked with Clint Eastwood and Every Which Way But Lose. It's been a lot of stuff. Yeah, Sally's no longer with us. Billy Green Bush, who I remember as the dad in Critters. He's here as the warden. Roger Mosley who played TC, a man in PI. He's the leader of this gang who becomes an ally for our lead character. Brian Dennehy, another guy that we lost. He's here as the leader of these racist guys. So it's a different role for Brian Dennehy. And it's not a movie that goes into cliches of 
okay, it's prison, so there's going to be some butt sex and rape. No, it doesn't go into that. He does have a friend, and okay, is he going to get killed? Well, that does happen. But I guess it's a movie that it brought an authenticity to its setting in prison. It felt real. It felt like all these inmates were real. I would not be surprised a lot of them were real inmates. So I like the, the 70s authenticity and just 70s in general that feel that it brings to it with the dialogue. Put a lid, you know, put a lid on that garbage, you ghetto rejects. That's something you're not going to... Well, I don't know if I say you wouldn't see that nowadays. But definitely not the feel and look of it, of course, because this came out in 1979. Or oh, another person, before I forget, Richard Mall. Yes, from Nightport. He's one of the bad guys with Brian Dennehy. He, he's got a full set of hair. Because I always think of Richard Mall as bald, but he's got a full set of hair in this. So, a different look in, for Richard Mall. But yeah, the story kept me interested to see what would happen next. And some nice pieces of dialogue about dreams and expectations hey but no, when nothing happens that's the worst man that's the worst that's why you gotta be careful about dreams and expectations because when nothing happens that's gonna be the worst and that's understandable it's understandable that line of thinking and getting more into spoilers starting now the the sad thing is that even though he does well even though he would be in there this is council meeting and the people across you could tell they were never going to let him in anyway and I'm not I can't say verbatim but they're trying to get him to say are you sorry for what you did would you not do what you did before if you could change things but at the same time you get the idea that no matter how this guy answers they're not going to fucking do it anyway so you get that feeling, well, wow, this was a waste of time. That That's what our lead character feels. But then also, it's like, you know what? I will not repudiate. Okay? I did what I did. I guess I would do it again. If that same event happened. And you can understand his thinking. I mean, if your 14-year-old sister or stepsister is being abused, what will you do to the guy? If she's being bashed, what you, would you do to the guy? And again, I can't say it verbatim, but uh, Peter Strauss gave a really wonderful speech that was impactful and powerful, like a big fuck you to these guys. And then again, spoilers, even though on the radio they're doing the Olympic stuff and people listen to it, the lead guy says fuck it and has someone time him actually i believe either roger mosley or someone else time him and he, he beats the time he beats the time so not only would he have made it he would have won and then he takes the style watch and just throws it and it's one of those things where it's grav gratifying but it's it's gratifying but sad because he would have encountered success and who knows what, but because of his lot in life, this is where he's at. But he still has a certain sense of pride and people around the prison are cheering for him. And there's a part of me is like, would that really happen? Would people be cheering for him? But then you read in the comments of people who are actually in prison and it's about how they would do the same thing. It's like, again, not everyone in prison is just this mindless animal. And it's also interesting that Peter Strauss is a white guy, but who are the people who help him out? People of black and people of Hispanic who help him go through this picket line that Brian Dennehy and his racist pals built. Oh, I just mentioned that because in this age of progressiveness, that's something that happened in this 1979 film, but you don't see fucking credits jerking off to this movie. So 
I wouldn't say the movie gives you the visual style that you think of Michael Mann. Like you think of Michael Mann, you think of collateral, you think of heat, even the keep. There's certain visual artistic look to his films. You don't really get that in this. But at the same time, that's fine because that way it centers strictly on the characters and the story. And I do think both are done fairly well. And I don't really have much problems with it. Really did not have much problems with it at all. This is a nice, decent little film. It's nothing big. It's nothing huge. It's not like big action scenes or spectacle. Nothing like that in the slightest. This was a TV movie, so its budget is limited. But at the same time, utilized fairly well for what it was supposed to be. And uh, yeah, I thought it did a good job for what it was trying to do. So the Jericho Mile, I would recommend to people who are curious to see Michael Mann, how he started off. To see a really decent, dramatic prison film. I would only say sports-based. I guess a little bit with his track racing, but... And then him training, and he talked about how he just loves to run. He loves it. And so, I guess, a little bit of a sports film, in a way. Oh, uh, another guy, Ed Lauder, who I remember from Death Wish 3. He's a guy who's helping train uh, Peter Strauss's character. And Peter Strauss, I haven't seen him in a lot of movies. I think he was the president in, like, Triple X State of the Union. But... Uh, he did more TV work, but he was really good in this. I liked his demeanor. I liked his character. He's a guy who just wanted to be left alone, do his thing, didn't want to any drama, anything of that nature. And yeah, the Jericho Mile I was impressed with. Really good flick. I don't want to give everything away, but uh, I definitely recommend it. So thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.